We roll on the floor. We eat well. We drink well. We roll on the floor with our dogs. We bicycle. We run. We ride. We bicycle. We run. We eat well. We play with our dogs. We eat well. We drink well. We play with our dogs. We watch Homeland, and we don't think it applies to us. We watch Carrie trying to warn the world in the last few seasons that the war hero who was a congressman was really a secret Muslim who was plotting an attack in America. And we hear that Obama loved that show more than any other show and had the actor of that show in the White House. He loved it so much. And we don't put two and two together, but we come up with 17. And we go on and we play with our dogs and we roll on the floor and we eat well and we drink well and we take our vitamins and so forth and so on. But we don't take life imitating art as real. Nor do we take art as imitating life as real. We don't make the connections. We roll on the floor with our dogs. We eat well and we drink well and we take our vitamins and so on. You get the picture. And so it goes on. And I'm pretty sure that there are those in this government who every day wake up and say, I don't believe I've gotten away with so much for so long. How dumb can this country be? As I stand here, I don't know who they are. But just knowing what we know about this government and the fact that terrorism has metastasized under their watch, wouldn't you have to conclude that at least some of them are not 100% kosher, to use a word that hasn't been used in a long time? Let's put it another way, that, that, that not all of them are 100% halal. I'll put it in a way that you might understand. This is directed at the Muslims out there who know what I'm talking about. Wouldn't it stand to reason that there are some in this government who are not 100% halal in this government? who may not be as clean as you'd like them to be with regard to protecting American Americans, you'd logically have to conclude that, given that terrorism has metastasized under this administration. So some of them can't be doing their job, or some of them are doing their job all too well for the other side. And so that's how most people are thinking. Don't think I'm the only one saying this. Did you hear what I just said to you? Didn't you see the story over the weekend? 72 members of the Department of Homeland Security. 72 members of them are on the terror watch list. Can you believe this? Trump says complete shutdown of Muslims entering. Well, I said it Friday. He's 100% right. It's logical. Trump calls for complete shutdown of Muslims entering the U.S. He's right. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump says he's calling for complete and total shutdown on Muslims entering the U.S. He's 100% right. Trump says in a statement released by his campaign today that his proposal comes in response to the level of hatred among large segments of the Muslim population toward Americans. Who can disagree with this man? Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski says Trump's proposed ban would apply to everybody, including Muslims seeking immigration visas, as well as tourists seeking to enter the country. Does that not make sense? Can anyone raise their hand and say in a time of terror that's largely emanating from the Muslim world that you shut down the Muslim entry into the U.S.? He's rushing them in as fast as he can from Somalia, from Syria, you name it. What sane nation would do this? Let's make a little statement together. Today is December 7th, Pearl Harbor Day. Many of you don't even know what Pearl Harbor was. It's when Jap Japan attacked our Pacific fleet in uh, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. And 3,000 Americans are so lost their lives in the so-called sneak attack. Although it was not 100% a sneak attack, there were warnings, there were implications. I, I, read, I read every possible scenario on that. So that was the Pearl Harbor. Now, let us say we had our Pearl Harbor on 9-11, which we certainly did. Then we went to sleep again. We went to sleep so much that we elected someone twice who was not only not conducting the war on terror adequately, but is doing it in a way that some people even question his loyalties. Let's be clear. Let's clear the air. Some are questioning who he is, whether he's sympathetic to them. They don't know what to make of this guy because he's not clear about his positions. And then we have Jad Johnson and DHS who failed us again last week. Now suddenly he's giving a speech telling us not to uh, uh, categorize all Muslims a certain way. Again, bending over backwards once again. Alice in Wonderland, the world upside down, right? Upside down through the looking glass. That's what the Lewis Carroll wrote Alice in Wonderland for. It was for Barack Obama and his administration. Loretta Lynch, again, again, looking through the looking glass, backwards. They're looking at everything backwards. That's what the Alice in Wonderland was written for. So now, we have a Pearl Harbor in America on 9-11. We had another one last week, if you don't remember. That was last week. Last week. Last week, people slaughtered by two Muslims. 
the couple next door, the lovely hijab-wearing woman who loved Allah, peace-loving man, Mr. Beard, they read their holy book day and night. Then they gave a machine gunning to their co-workers in cold blood. Right in front of your eyes it happened. So what do you do the next day? Well, let's go back in time. World War II was declared after Pearl Harbor. If Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the next day after declaring war, had said we're going to bring in as many Germans as Japanese as we can, tell me what would have happened in this country. Not only are we going to not stop bringing them, we're going to bring in more of them. We're going to bring in more Germans because not all Germans are Nazis. That's the same thing as Obama saying. Bring in more Germans because not all Germans are Nazis. That's what Obama is saying. That's what the entire administration is saying. If you say one word about a German, you're a racist. And it's edging towards violence. This is what we're living with. In other words, there's no common sense anymore, anywhere in this administration. It's Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass. At least that's how I see it, and that's how I say it. What do you say? Is Trump wrong in calling for the complete shutdown on Muslims entering the U.S.? 855-400-728-2, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth and financial future. Call 1-800-289-2640. We're all puzzled over the Hunter's actions on a daily basis. So much sympathy towards Muslims from the entire orchestra conducted by Obama, and no sympathy for the victims to speak of. Only a fear that will offend Muslims if we say a word about, like, how come you're bringing more in? Why are you bringing in from Somalia? Why are you doing this? Why are you pushing the Syrians down our throat? That makes us evil in his mind. Daniel on WYAB Radio in Mississippi, we have about two minutes for you. Go ahead, please. Hi, yes. Uh, I was just calling. I think World War II, uh, Germany is a great parallel for this. I think that the point could be raised that possibly if we had taken in more Jewish refugees in Germany, the number decreased maybe could have been decreased that were killed from 6 million to 6 million. But we're not taking in Christian refugees from Syria. He's bringing in Muslim refugees from Syria. Yes, sir. And I was saying that I think that if we... He is rejecting Syrian Christians. In fact, there's a case in San Diego from two weeks ago of a Syrian Christian family that was already here. They were welcomed by Syrian Christians, and the State Department deported them. Yes, sir. My point was that I think that it, looking back in 50 years, I think that if we, if we had a way to vet the screening process so that we could take in good families that weren't part of this... Radical I understand that, but that... look. There's another solution to the Syrian refugee problem. With all the money in the world being spent on bringing them in, going into the greedy hands of Catholic charities, Lutheran charities, Baptist Family Services, and the other greedy dogs who are making fortunes off this crisis, who are lobbying around the clock to flood America with Muslims, instead of giving them the money, why not build a huge new city in Syria that is protected by the useless United Nations and let them live there until the war is over? until Assad is replaced, and let them then go and rebuild their nation. Why are you bringing them 8,000 miles to a foreign land where they will never accommodate themselves to the, to the mores of this country? Why? Yes, sir. Well, I was just, I was, my point. I hear you. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. And my common sense is irrefutable. It's Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Good morning. Look, it's changing right in front of our eyes. The terrorists are gaining ground. They're getting stronger. We have weaklings or fellow travelers running the government. Everyone knows that. Anyone with a brain could figure it out. 
and uh, we the people are left basi basically naked in the wind, and we're withdrawing into ourselves. We told you not to give Iran the right to develop a nuclear weapon. Do you know what just happened minutes ago? Iran just tested a ballistic missile in violation of the U.N. resolution. Now, how does that play with Obama and his great talk about how bad Israel is and how wonderful Iran is and don't fear anything, Iran's our friend? Everything the man says is a lie. Nothing that comes out of his mouth is to be trusted. So why should we trust him on terror? We don't. Most of us don't. Terror walks in. Investigators say Southern California probe points to Pakistan. You've all seen the pictures of that lovely face of the burqa wearing uh, newlywed. The, the prize that he picked up in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. The, the beautiful, beautiful lover of the practitioner of the religion of peace. And there he was, Mr. Holy, with the beard and the head cap, coming to America with a sneer on his face, a hatred that poured right off of him. And he was ushered right in. Come on in. We didn't see this coming. U.S. intelligence community looked the other way, the Flatfoots. Not one word. Oh, no, no, come on in. Bring them all in. Come on in. Come on in. All of you, come on in. The only ones you have to worry about are them darn Christians with their machine guns. Media? Oh, yeah, Jake Tapwater, a real stalwart defender of the American way. Right up there with Wolf Blitzer. A lifetime of loyalty. He ought to get the Presidential Medal of Freedom along with George Lucas at Lincoln Center for doing such a great job of lying to the American. The Lenny Reifenstahls of our time. Norway offers refugees free flights to return home. See, the, 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 the turning of the worm now, all the liberal countries. France elects nationalist Marine Le Pen. Norway paying them to leave. Very soon it's going to be kicking them out. You wait and see. You think right now is the, you think this is how it's going? You're wrong. This is just the beginning. The countries are now finally getting their act together. They're finally realizing that they want to kill all, they want to be, the ones they invited in through their kindness, their, their n niceness, their liberalism. Get it? Do I have to finish the paragraph? I mean, Loretta Lynch is listening. I don't have to finish the paragraph. So soon it's going to be not only giving them money to go home, it's going to be one-way flights, whether they want them or not. That's coming to a neighborhood near you, too, whether you know it or not in your lifetime. Just make sure you're not the one on the plane that they send out of the country. That's all. Just make sure you're not the one who's sent out of your own country. That could happen, too. You could wake up. They could deport you. Crazier things have happened when you have this kind of regime or this kind of hunter running a country. So what do we have to look forward to? Nothing. As I speak, the Department of Homeland Security, J. Johnson, is speaking at a Muslim organization in Virginia. Now, unto itself, that's not a bad thing. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing, but this is a terrorist-associated uh, organization, very well known by the government itself. And he has the, the, the stupidity to go there and give a speech today? Wow. So, yeah, there it is. I don't have the speech. He's speaking now, the great J. Johnson, the head of Homeland Security. 855 I should take some calls, I guess. Yes, indeed. J. Johnson, the man who saved us from the attack that occurred just the other day. The man who was so vigilant. The man who was so vigilant. Like a wolf guarding his den, that Jed Johnson. He had everyone in DHS. The FBI was on the on the money. They were just watching for them. They didn't let him in. Well, they did kind of. They got right through them. Because they were looking the other way. They were looking at you. They're worried about you, how you might talk about a Muslim. Or whether you're a nut or something who might go off like a ballistic missile. So this is what America... Even li Amer liberal Americans are even thinking the way I'm speaking right now. Everything changed. The phrase, the American phrase, game changer. Let's see, 9-11 was a game changer for a while. Boston Marathon bombing was a game changer for a while. Uh, San Bernardino, I think it's been forgotten already. Oh, yeah, yeah, the average person's partying already. You know, just take a look at the website. So I'll, I'll show you what. Let's go to the New York Daily News. I'm sorry, the New York Post under uh, Murdoch Jr. Here it is. You'll never believe what Kim and Kanye named their baby boy. That's the headline in the New York Post. Two of the lowest forms of humanity are featured on a daily basis in the sickest country in the history of the world. Who would pay attention to these nobodies? Who cares what this, this freak of nature does? Every day, New York Post. 
what Kim and Kenya named their baby boy. Hey, you know what? Get back to me when your baby boy's 15. Tell me what great parents you are, you stupid freaks.